I take PrEP because for a couple of things. A, it protects me from HIV. Jesus Brillantes has an active sex life and doesn't use condoms, but will almost certainly never contract HIV because of his use of preventative medication called PrEP. And secondly, it gives me the peace of mind when I'm having sexual rendezvous with, um, with other gay men. And with that as well, taking PrEP, I don't have to worry about having a conversation with a potential partner about their HIV status because I know I'm protected by PrEP. Thanks partly to PrEP, new HIV infections are in free fall. Now, the heart of Australia's gay community, Inner Sydney, the East and Inner West, is expected to shortly become the first place in the world to hit an extraordinary milestone, the end of community transmission of HIV. It's a great achievement. Over 40 years, so many people have given their lives to get here. So I'm quietly proud, I think, of all the people who've made such an effort uh, and to bring it in now to a situation where we are looking at the virtual elimination of uh, HIV transmission locally. Oh, that's me, hold on. We know where we stand right because now, of high me. rates of testing. At clinics like this one, featured in a lively advertising campaign. Here we are, walk right in. Oh, thank Madonna, I booked online. Excuse me, fellas. Oh, hello there. New South Wales is on its way to a 90% reduction in new HIV cases over a decade. That's the holy grail considered internationally to be effective elimination. So in the inner city, where most of the prevention services have been focused and where the, uh, where the condition was uh, the most common, uh, we've seen reductions of at least 70%. Okay, so Andrew Grulick is one of the world's premier HIV researchers. They don't see a doctor, they, get, they have a rapid HIV test on the site. He expects Inner Sydney to hit the 90% target in 2025. It's been, my life in research has been over that period, so it, it's, been, it's been terrible and it's been extraordinary and now it's getting close to wonderful really. Um, with, with the possibility that we have. It just shows how individually we've taken control of our own responsibility to make sure we're safe and we control. I come from a generation where HIV was basically looked at as a death sentence if you're a gay man. You'd like to know the answer to the question as to whether people can get the AIDS virus from a swimming pool. Is that your question? Yes, the answer to that is you can't. It's four decades since the virus that causes AIDS arrived in Australia. From the start, health authorities battled panic and misinformation by informing people. Semen getting in from one man into another person's blood system is very risky business. That's, that's an overwhelming way we know the disease is spread. What did you get out of it? Well, it spared the hell out of me. I didn't realise that um, the, the virus was so, you know, outgoing. Bill Botell was senior advisor to the Federal Health Minister, Neil Blewett. We had no vaccine, we had no treatment, we had no really effective way of containing the virus, except that we thought that prevention through use of condoms, providing clean needles, injecting drug users, uh, and education and information would become the vaccination, if you like, a behavioural vaccine that would allow us to control and manage the spread of the virus. Australia's strategy was devised with the help of those most likely to contract HIV, including intravenous drug users and sex workers like Julie Bates. Why isn't everybody in our community aware today of the risks and of the responsibilities that go with <coughs> casual sex? She was critical to convincing brothel owners to institute a new rule all customers must wear condoms. One of the brothel owners in Nevada said, any man that comes across my threshold and does not use condoms will be shown the door. And that was the start of the fall of the house of cards, so other brothels followed suit. 
Australia decriminalised sex work and provided free needle exchanges. Those decisions in, in the 80s were absolutely critical and they stopped what happened in many other places which was a general heterosexual epidemic. And those decisions um, uh, were controversial but they were highly effective. On the basis of truthful and accurate information, bit by bit the new rate of infections started to come down and it diverged remarkably from what was happening in places like the United States and Europe. In the US, the rapid spread of HIV was accelerated by the attitude of religious conservatives during the Reagan years. And callously and cynically, they said, well, they deserve to die. This is God's punishment. Nothing could be more preposterously silly than saying that it's a virus, not God's punishment. But that made sure that in America, a manageable, serious problem, but manageable, became a pandemic. We test for HIV at least twice a year. You should too, handsome. Back in New South Wales, HIV might be under control, but it isn't over. Modern drugs can stop an HIV positive person from spreading the virus and keep them healthy, but there's no cure. And in some communities, both gay and straight, HIV transmission is still a problem. We've done incredibly well amongst community connected gay and bisexual men. However, we know that there's still some areas that we need to do more work, such as areas like South or well, Western and Southwestern Sydney, where we're not seeing the same declines and sometimes increases in infections. And this is only an hour away from our CBD. The place where we're seeing um, most transmissions these days are in recently arrived gay and bisexual men from overseas and, and uh, it's a real challenge for us. We need to learn how to engage better with those men soon after they arrive. We're saying it's over. My concern is that we're going to be missing a whole demographic of people and we're likely to, to see a resurgence. Migrant communities are a focus of HIV campaigns. Hey! Are you right, Sample? Doing a bum swab. In we go. The message is regular testing and safe sex remain critical. An oral check. We're in a much better, you know, space when it comes to transmission. But it's the young generation for me. It's very important that they understand how they need to protect themselves and how they need to look after themselves. Oh.